What is up, YouTube's Mountain Man Magic, and we have draft number 22. 22, man, we've done a lot of drafting. Uh, first pack, got some pretty nice cards, actually. Probably Dijon of Wishes, it's just a great blue card. 4-4 four, four, Flyer for 5, that then can get you some pretty nice card advantage, just overall power level with its counters. Herald of Faith is nice, Sage is nice, I like Switcheroo. Some decent commons, but yeah, Dijon of Wishes is our go-to card there. Wow. Vivian's Invocation's not too bad. We could take Sky Scanner though, it's probably the safest pick, because it's going to make our deck no matter what, although Vivian's Invocation is pretty strong. I'm going to take the Sky Scanner though, let's just be, let's just be solid, you know. Let's look at who we're drafting with. Muddle, Mudfleck, Mudfeck, and dude, why, I can't read anything, Mr. T6. Peckendolf, cool, cool, cool skater, 513. Oh my goodness, we're doing it. I'm taking this. Can we pull off the white-red deck? Dude, Luminous Bonds, probably the, the pick I should take, but I'm taking reinforcements. We have yet to play the white-red aggro deck. That would be fun to maybe do. Because, this yeah, this might be our last draft, so go out with a bang. Hazmat, Medic, 911. David, Cantro. 0666 and then hey there's us mountain man magic i'm hoping this draft goes quick though because it's pretty late it is late it's been a long week already and honestly i'm pretty sleepy but we got the schedule we got to stick to the schedule gotta stay committed you know and i i like drafting it's just fun i'm, I'm ready for m19 to be done honestly guilds of ravnica spoilers just look so amazing if you do like guilds of ravnica spoilers I would appreciate it. Hit that subscribe. Check out my limited content around it. It's going to be a great time. All right. Ooh, 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 ooh. If we're going for the aggro, aggro deck, we want Lightning Mare. Runic Armasaur is just the best card here, though. Yeah, there's nothing really too exciting about this card. Could take, like, Lightning Mare is fine. The Ogre isn't too shabby. Active Treason kind of works, but Runic Armasaur is just the best card here. Even Wind Mage isn't too bad either. Because maybe we end up be a little like aggro, white-blue, but then we splash the red for the reinforcements, or blue-red, splash the white for the reinforcements. Because if I go Armasaur, then we're definitely losing out on something. Blue doesn't seem super open. Green seemed pretty open, so I think I'm going to take the Armasaur. Wow, a tap land. Vishino Pyromancer works for the aggro deck. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it. Inspire Charge works for the aggro deck. I'm gonna take it. Brawlbash Ogre is not exactly what we're looking for. I'm just, I'm all over the place right now. 100% all over the place. Apparatus kinda works. Scholar Stars works in the sense that we have a single artifact. I'm going to take the Apparatus. Bogart Brute, love this card. Especially in the aggro deck. Breastwing Falcon works in the aggro deck. So here's our, our questionable cards. Here's our, here's our aggro deck thus far. Ooh, not ideal. Big creature or tormenting voice. Or some removal for a monster creature. I think I'm going to take the sideboard. Tormenting voice. These are two big good cards that we're we're running, we're putting off to the side, that we're running away from, give or take. And they're double cost, so it's gonna be pretty hard to splash a double cost card. And we've got, I mean, we have two of the win conditions for the deck already, which is pretty nice. The creatures usually are not the hard part to get for this aggro deck. It's it's the inspired charge and the heroic reinforcements. Ooh, if I was watching this, would I be screaming? at my screen just saying what are you doing you're blowing it probably that's a fair assessment but right now these are just unless like if we pull Tezzeret in pack two or something then I think we have to abandon ship on it to an extent could look to splash black uh, yeah probably take the the tap land in case you want to go that three color aggro. <laughs> There's a winning plan. 
if we can get the two and three drops that we need, we'll be in business. Act of treason or catalyst elemental. I like act of treason because it works in just about any setup, if not most setups. We'll take the three drop creature. Because if they throw a big wall down and they're like, oh no, I can't, you know, a big body, not necessarily a wall, but a big body. And you got Act of Treason, that's your win condition. That's your, not win condition, but that's your winning move. Is look, I'm gonna take your big body and they're going to be a traitor, as it were, and win me this game. I've lost plenty of games to Act of Treason, even in unexpected circumstances. I think if you're playing against red in this format, you have to at least be on your toes about them always having one, at least in the sideboard after game one. Mountain, that's a good sign in the sense that red is going to be wide open for the rest of the draft. Not ideal, not ideal, not ideal. Siegebreaker Giant's good. Cavalry Drillmaster's good. I feel like I'm like I'm I'm honestly more tempted to take the lower cost card. Even a trumpet blast is nice. Because you gotta make sure you're hitting two and three drops if you're gonna win in this. But Siegebreaker Giant makes sure that you also don't just get completely outscaled, so we'll take the uncommon. Ooh, another Bogart Brute's a big help. Oh my goodness, a second charge and an axe, but gotta have creatures for the tricks to really matter. So we're doing that. Not ideal. Blue looks nice here. And we're gonna take the one drop white card. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, unfortunately we're not really seeing any removal either. Like lightning strikes, electrifies, shocks. So right now it seems like this is not as open as we'd probably hope it was. But there's plenty of drafting left. Another Pyromancer, I'm just slamming that in. I saw there's a, a Valor, but Pyromancers are pretty annoying in this format if, if you're all in on it. Turn one Rustwing Falcon, turn two Pyromancer, turn three Brute, turn four Reinforcements. That's a pretty solid game plan right there. Just give everything, just gets, gives everything haste, okay. If we can get an Angel, that'd be nice. If we could get, I mean, we, get, we gotta get these two and three drops really packed up, like really solid. I do like the Falcons though. They've kind of grown on me, especially in this aggressive deck. Because there aren't a whole lot of answers for them, at least early on, especially if you have a trick that gets them to get rid of their your, your opponent's blockers. Swift Claw's pretty solid here. <laughs> Dude, we're passing so many good cards. But sometimes, you know, if, if this ends up being our last draft, I do want to at least try and give this deck a decent shot at working out for us. Do we do Field Creeper? Catalyst Elemental, you're not exactly excited to play. Dragon Egg doesn't really do anything for us. Revitalize is not really going to get played. And a 2-1 isn't all bad. If they, if, the, if they just stumble, you play first. They don't play anything turn two. Just getting something on the board is sometimes all you need to do. Oh, I know. I've kind of blown it. Blue and green seem solid. But blue and green could also seem solid because we've taken the aggro line, and as a result, my need to justify this choice has led me to say blue and green have only seemed so open because we, we've let them be open instead of following what our seat was in the best position to draft. Two Bogart Brutes, though. That makes me kind of happy. Ooh, another giant? Sure. We haven't seen any of the red removal spells, which is kind of annoying if someone's also taking the, the red removal for their blue-red annoying deck. That's never ideal. We've got 12 creatures so far, though, so we're doing okay there. We're just 
Pack three, got to bring it home for us. It'd also be great if folks could draft a little quicker. Don't they know that I'm tired? Who's the, who's the slowpoke here? Mudfleck, is it you, dude? Another... Another falcon? Sure. Could have looked to take trusty pack beast. I kind of like the falcons, just... Let's get crazy. Ooh, this wield? Yes, please. Getting a couple gifts. I'd say that's kind of nice to pick up at the end of a pack. If we can get a Marauder's Axe, I'll be happy. If we can get two more combat tricks, I'll be... I'll be pretty happy with this. Because that Bogart Brute, man, the 3-2 Menace, turn 3, is not easily dealt with. Especially if you have some, like, a sure strike. That's a fun, that's a fun play to do. Ooh, ask and you shall receive, my friends. Ask and you shall receive. Alright, we need some goblin instigators. A couple goblin instigators. Another Bogart Brute. Another heroic reinforcements. And like a demanding dragon or a lathless we're good that's all I'm, I'm just asking for an ideal four or five cards for this deck maybe we get a trumpet blast maybe we get even another inspired charge is that too much to ask for it's kind of surprising to see all this stuff I'm just going to take the rare because it's maybe fun to do a constructed deck with some draft chaff deck techs if y'all are enjoying those Got to make some decks for the just for fun cues, just to make sure you're getting in, getting some games in. And we're waiting for player to pick a card. It'd be cool if they said like waiting for player, and then as the time ticked down, it'd be like waiting for player, waiting for slow player. This wield, sure. All righty then. Because it'd be nice too if we could make this a 16 land deck, which I think we can do if we don't. If we kind of stick in this area, maybe give or take one card, we're okay. But we gotta gotta add a couple more quality three drops. The foil card for sure. In a way, the reason I like the aggro deck is a lot of the cards you need are at the common rarity, so you're not hinging on geez okay you're not hinging on big bombs that are sometimes not never even seen in a draft multiple drafts and uncommons like heroic reinforcements is at the level of like bomb quality which is pretty cool pretty cool that you can find these cards usually in every draft maybe not quickly or when you want them wow 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 I think we just take the sword here though it's pretty annoying to deal with it's pretty suffocating it's worked out really well for us every time we've played it it's worked out really well for our opponent every time we've played against it our just biggest issue would be that red white wow what look at this pack lich's caress isreth deckhand and skilled animator do we want the angel of the dawn or the trumpet blast that's the question in a way, the Angel of the Dawn is a Trumpet Blast. Like, not entirely, but kind of. Dude, look what... Oh my goodness. Just let this be a lesson. That's why you don't force stuff. Because forcing stuff... It's, you know... You're going to break it. And not break it in the sense of, I broke the format, I figured it out. Whenever anyone says they broke the format, that typically means... They just really want you to click on their video. Because nothing breaks the format. At least not this format. I'm sure there's other older ones that, nah, you just force this color combo, and more often than not, you're going to have an above average win rate. Breaking the format means you're just really good at knowing what to draft for your seat. Although, man, the five mana cost has been an issue for us. I'm going to cut one of the giants. Nah, would it make more sense to cut the knightly valor? 
Because at that point in the game, is it really helping you to have... We'll come back to that. Do we want the motivator to give stuff haste and be annoying? Do we want a third pyromancer? Or do we want a Pegasus Courser to make stuff evasive and win the race? I'm actually leaning towards the Pyromancer. But I think, nah, I think that's kind of ridiculous. I think we take the Pegasus Courser. Goblin Motivator could be pretty solid though too. Especially with something like Siegebreaker Giant. Swift Claw. I'm gonna take the Courser though. I feel like that's gonna be more consistent. Ooh, Trumpet Blast makes its way to us. Yes, please. Ooh, Inferno Hellion, or a second Inspired Charge, or a Drill Master, what? Wow. Man, if we had a Thud, I would grab this Inferno Hellion, no questions asked. Inspired Charge, is a second one of these good enough to throw in? Or do we just want a second Drill Master? Man. Actually, the Hellion might be the best because it fits our curve plans the best. I'm gonna do that. Taking the Hellion. Mighty Leap. Do we want the trick or the go wide? Let's go wide. Lava Axe works. Throw it to the face. Line Breaker 3 2. Really annoying. Take a fourth Rustwing Falcon. Just constantly poking him. Poke, poke, poke. The Line Breaker I found to be better in this deck yeah we're getting we're getting a lot of cards that we need i'm just trying to make sure i draft them correctly and actually maybe we just want the two drop another swift claw We've only got one two three four f yeah we could cut the field creeper put the swift claw in sure sure let's do it uh nothing too exciting do we take the double cast on the chance that We get to, like, turn six. We go double cast into double heroic reinforcements. A. Eh? That would be a fantastic combo. Hoo, 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 hoo. Another double cast or this thing. This big old creature that we're not going to play with. Nah, I think this is fine. I think we actually have a decent chance at going two and one with it. If we can draw decent starting hands, curve out, which our curve appears that we should, have a decent shot at going one into two into three. That's that's really all you could ask for, especially in a draft in limited like this. Okay, let's add some basic lands. Eight and eight, yes please, save deck. All right, we'll see you all in match one. And match one, we're up against the Stink Man. I don't think that's someone who was in our draft pod. Luckily, we're on the play. Luckily, we get a no lander. Good luck, have fun. You too, man. I should have said you too, Stinky. But we're going to mulligan. Our... <laughs> what? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, there's... <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that go from... No lands to all lands. That's impressive. Truly impressive. Alright, when I said we had a chance of going 2 1, that was assuming we would actually draw cards that kind of had some semblance of like good and land. We had, we had a great starting hand without any land. There was our ideal turn one play. All right, we have them on a 20 turn clock. Ooh, yeah, and look, they have a, play a tap land. Mountain, yes. Begin combat, attack. No blocks, go to damage, end combat, main. I'm playing the Pyromancer because, well, because I can. And they're going to go turn three, probably something like the three drop vampire, what is it, vampire sovereign, or the two two bird, and just completely ruin our day. That's not all bad. It's, it's bad, but it's not all bad. 
Okay. We get combat attack. Go for damage and combat main. And we're just gonna play the higher cost card. Because if we end up drawing a two drop, then we can play both cards. If we end up drawing a two drop next turn, then we're stuck with a card in our hand that really shouldn't be there. Swinging for four next turn. So do they really want to keep three mana up just to keep this thing up? Probably, because that buys them a turn. Especially with them being blue and black, they probably got some instant stuff that isn't going to make that turn a complete wash for them. Yeah, but they're they're already thinking. You got six cards in hand, bro. I would, f I, I would, I would reckon I'd feel that you're gonna be okay. Strangling spores. All right, it's not. It's unfortunate, but it's not all bad. It's not exactly great either. Damage and combat main. I'm not playing the land because like there's no card I can draw that me then playing that land. Me not playing the land really matters. If I draw a second land, it really doesn't matter. Oh, so let's make them think I have lightning strike or something. If I had lightning strike, why not just use it? Great question. Although, Restwing Falcon hitting for five already? Talk about value, my friends. This is painful. This is so painful. Because he's got to think, what if he attacks with the Swift Plot? Do I offer the trade? Answer, survey says, maybe. Ooh, like that's not a fun card to see. I'd like to know what else they have in the hand though to think that was even a question. Attack with your sentinel. <laughs> okay. Land, yeah, it's totally fine. Totally to be expected. Alright. What are they doing? Oh, I'm. I know what I'm doing, dude. I'm just so whatever. I mean, we're down to no cards in hand. I'm just waiting for them to play something big, and then I'm just gonna scoop because there's really no point in them wasting, in us just wasting time. We could. No, we didn't get the invoke the divine, did we? I don't think so. Divination, yeah. We'll give it a draw or two more. Maybe we get our angel or something, or we get the... We get our, what, our giant act of treason. Doesn't really do anything for us. We get act of treason. Give it flying. Swing. Let's just see if they want to trade something with this. I should not yield all turn. Okay. Interesting. I mean, they have more cards in hand, so them trading one for one is in their favor. The thing is, they got rid of a 3 3 flyer that would eventually just kill us anyway. Now granted, we have literally no board presence. Is this a scoopable card? Pretty much. Pretty much. If we can draw our angel, we still have a fighting chance. Nope, okay, I'm just I'm just scooping. Let's go to game two. We're flooding out with a five card keep into a five card massive land flood. Yeah, when you just have when you just have a 
a five card hand into a deck that is able to throw big blockers down early, draw cards, just look for their bombs. I don't think there's any line of drawing that gets us out of that game with a W. All right, let's try this again, deck. Keepable hand. Yeah, that's keepable. Three land, two red. Let's do it to it. Unfortunately, no bird, but we will overcome. Hey, there it is. Keep showing up a turn late. What's, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with this picture? We got two chances to draw our fourth land. Fourth land to fifth land will be feeling pretty solid. Now if they go, they can't go horsey here. Do they go anything here? Survey says, no, that feels good. Begin combat, we get our fourth land. Hitting for three, feels solid. Ooh, do they counter it though? Let's find out, oh wait. Whoops, whoops, whoops. If they counter it, I'll be a little sad. Ooh, they don't. That feels good. And now we got two chances to draw our fifth land. Do they really not have anything still? That's not a bad draw. Hitting for six. No blocks, interesting. Let's just go as wide as we can. Counter now, cancel. All right, it happens. They're still down to 11. Next turn we go Sword and Falcon. They're gonna have to have some good cards. Wall's not exactly gonna do it for him. Begin combat. We'll attack with both and just see. Maybe they're hesitant, they're like, ah, we'll take it. Yep. All right, here goes nothing. Next turn, they got five. Worst case scenario, they have strangling spores. They wait for us to equip, kill it. They take three, they're down to five. If we draw a land though, if we draw a land, is it worth, ooh, does it not even matter? Ooh, Dijin of Wishes, not too shabby. That's a pretty ideal draw, for sure. A second Falcon's nice. So I think we equip this to Bogart Brute. And then if they do want to double block, we can take out the Dijin, plus other stuff gets through. I think we do that. No, but then we lose the Menace creature, right? If we put it on the Swift Claw, they have to block, they throw the wall in front of it, or they can't. We attack with both. If we attack with everything, worst case scenario, the Dijin eats the Falcon, the wall blocks whatever, or they double block Brute, they take five, six. No, they couldn't do that. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Attack. Attack with all creatures. We get it. I forget that we get the 2 2 attacking with us. Gotta keep that in mind. And the menace is just pretty annoying to deal with. Getting rid of the wall is helpful. It also means that they can't block that. Ooh, they want to eat that, okay. They're down to four. Next turn, we're swinging for 
Assuming they block the 5-1, or they have a blocker for the 5-1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Plus if we draw the land, throwing out Angel of the Dawn with everything, that's good. Yeah, this is a pretty ideal hand for us. We got to our fourth land, which was really what we needed. Even though they had the counter for the cavalry, that's all right. I'm 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 actually happier they countered that than having a counter for the Bogart Brute, because that, that menace, as we're seeing right now, is a pain to deal with. And they're trying to figure out, like, what's the, what's the line here? Because I have to be able to block three creatures. Okay, sweet. We did it, team. Let's get after it. Come on. Come on. Djinn of Wishes. Where have I seen that card before? Oh yeah, it was our pack one, pick one. hey -o. I bet they were wishing for some more creatures, you know what I mean? Oh, 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 oh. Alright, they get to play first though. That's almost never good for us. Yeah, we'll keep this hand. It's not great that we have a four and a five drop with only two lands. Did I not realize that they put us on the play? That's all right, we got Bird. We got Bird into Swift Claw. That's a bold move, putting the aggro deck on the play. Land. Ooh. I think we're gonna take the high risk, high reward angle here. Should have attacked and then played. I know, I'm sorry. Please don't. Please don't yell at me. If we can go land, land, I'll be pretty happy. Yep. Be in combat. Attack. Alright, missing land drops. I mean, I get it, we're down to 16, but you should be able to get to three fairly consistently, and that's really all we need. Oh my goodness. Stop drawing your good cards. Dude, come on, what is this? Why are we doing this again? Birdie number two. Inspired Charge makes these a bigger deal than whatever, but we're light years away from that right now. Ooh, I can respect that. All right, there's another, there's a card. If we get that fourth land, throw down Hellion. Give us that second white. Alpha Strike, it's in the cards. We got three chances. We can get hit three times with this annoying, monstrously big card. Which we're not gonna block. If you want a race, my friend, you have a race. Play something annoying that doesn't really do anything. Not, not that, that is the exact opposite of what we were looking for. So this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Dude, missing these land drops is gutting. <sighs> A 
Let's remember too that we have to play this like during the attack or block phase, <laughs> not during a main phase. All right, so we're taking another six. Feels good. Oh my goodness. Not ideal, friends. Not ideal. Yeah, I think we're just dead. Dude, we had, oh, that's not what I want. We had this game if we just draw land, but it happens. It happens, you can't, can't complain. Nice, all right, I'm just gonna say GG's, GG's. Uh, concede game, all right, we'll see you on match two. And match two, we won the dice roll again, and we got, oh my gosh, dude, what is this? <sighs> That's keepable. That's not too shabby. Hey, cool skater, this dude was in our draft. You don't often see people in your draft after that first round. That's interesting. What you doing? You gonna keep? Come on, what takes people so long? What is the problem? There we go, we'll keep. We'll keep you on top of the library. Yeah, drawing that two drop, that's nice. Two drop and a three drop into potential three drop again. Ooh. Maybe we'll have another draft where we just play the same deck over and over. As long as I don't see blue right away, I'll be okay. Red's not ideal though. Because what if they shock this? What if? Well, then we know we're up against a deck that probably has better card quality than us. Ooh, is it a mono red? Dude, I don't mind this card. This card I do not think is all that great. For the three drop, we have our fourth land. Do we want to go to combat? Yeah, let's do it. Instant no block. I'm going to sky scanner here. Because if they're going to use the removal, they're going to use it on this. Because they don't want to trade it for the lightning mare. Gets us a card. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with our brute having to chill for another turn. Ooh, big body. Death touch, not ideal, but whatever. To us, it's just a it's just a two two blocker. Begin combat. Attack with all creatures. They're just taking the damage. Got it. Love it. All right. What do they got up next? See, like, this is why I don't like Lightning Mare, because you're afraid to attack into just about everything. It's fine. Like, they're not going to attack because they don't want to trade. And they don't want to race because we're way ahead. All right, that's fine. Yeah, dude, attack. Go for it. Um, yeah, I'll take three right now. That's fine. Pump it. Ooh, wait, I'll take four. Excuse me. Ooh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then next turn, we potentially attack f or just play Pyromancer for lethal. Okay. 
Okay, we'll save the trumpet blast. We're down to 10. Let's see what they play. Survey says, really interesting. Okay, sure. Two, three, four, five. Big old body, got it. Reinforcements, that seems good. Slam it down, just not even a second thought. Is there a concern? Three, seven, eight, nine, ten. If we tag with everything, they block one. They take three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, they're just, they're not even interested. Look at that, our deck has a keepable seven card hand and we win the game. Ooh, yes, starting with this in our hand, please. Please let us draw what we need. In a way, that's what we need. We now need to get some creatures that don't cost five plus mana. No two drop form. Just stupendous. Okay, well our deck that has 12, two and three drops, we have one of them. No, we have two, we have the ax and the trumpet blast. Who am I kidding? Three drop, four two, fair enough. Not ideal, but a good play in this position. Dude, what? get out of here with that. What are you doing? I'm gonna play Trumpet Blast. I'm gonna equip this to your creature. Nope. All right, all right, friends. What's gonna happen? Like, reinforcements is not good to play to get you two tokens that do basically nothing. We need to get bailed out here a little bit. Oh, dude, is this the dude in the draft that took all of our removal? This schmuck probably has our electrifies and everything. One, two, three. Ooh, they got Sarkan. What's up? <laughs> what? Oh my goodness. I think we just have to do this just to not let Sarkhan get out of hand. Like, that's embarrassing. But, gotta do what you gotta do. Man, our first... Not first, right? I think our last one had three keepable lands. Three lands, and then we draw four mountains in a row. That's not too shabby. Ooh, Gore Claw. That's not fun. Five. Our issue is. to see if they, like I'll trade Trumpet Blast for their 4-3. Okay. Actually, let's just play out the Hellion. Three, they're just slamming down something. Big body. Well, they're not gonna attack this turn, that's good. Oh, they are, okay, yeah, sure, let's. Let's trade for your big annoying thing. Oh, I guess the five, yeah, it gives that five three trample, that's true. Ooh, they got a combat trick, all right. Well, I think we just lose then. Yeah, okay, oh, not that concede okay so let's just fingers crossed keepable hand if we had one of each color I'd keep but 
can't do it. Dude, get out of here with this. I don't understand, man. They're just over there smiling. There's no way they're not. Yeah, we'll put it on top, though, because... You know, like, what else are we going to do? Oh, whoops. Whoops. No, let's, not, let's not skip playing a land. We did it. Okay. I should have put that axe on the bottom. My brain was saying, you got both colors. Don't worry about it, dude. <laughs> the last ref winning a trophy felt good, but you can see why I said it was it was odd starting games without having to mulligan every game or every match. Bogart Brute's a nice play. Do they want to trade? I'm going to say no. But I sure would appreciate it. Not really, because we're already down so many cards, we just have to pray that we can win the race. They got both colors. Feeling good. Did they? Does it really matter? Attack, pump it. I'm happy for you to take off turn three to do one extra damage. Yeah, they had to mulligan too. But their mulligan. <laughs> Gosh, dude. <sighs> so there's no way they block here. All right, we're taking seven, potentially 11. Play Trumpet Blast right now. <laughs> okay, or they have removal, so it doesn't even matter what we do. issue though is we're down on cards we're down three cards and we don't have we can't play anything in our hand yeah it's not looking good not looking good team hey they got their sarcan again just keep keep finding what you need it's fairly fitting to go out the way we came in Except the pre-release, it was nothing but mana problems for me and my two at a giant partner. I only played two at a giant. I didn't get to do any of the one-on-one -on -one stuff. Our draft started off with terrible draws. We're going to end with terrible draws. They're giving us another turn, though. That's kind of generous of them. Um, begin combat. I'm going to attack... Sarkan for two. There's really no reason to attack, attack Sarkan for two. But get rid of a creature with bigger power on the other side of the board. Let's do it. They're stuck on land, though. That's what it would appear, right? They got their fourth land. They gotta have some good cards. Ooh, they dropped Dreadmaw. Which makes sense. This game is probably not gonna get to the point where that would be the deciding factor. If we draw Heroic Charge, I'll be ecstatic. To think we could still pull off the 2 1. Four cards in hand, staring down seven power, bro. Please attack. Please attack, play nothing, say go. No attacks, all right. They're giving us, we still got life. Almost, almost there. 
Now granted, this thing, they have three turns and then they win. Tech both creatures at Sarkhan. I think that's okay. When I mean, they got four land up, my thought is they have Electrify. If they have Electrify, we lose regardless, so we might as well just play as if they don't. Make them have to trade a creature, do some damage to their Planeswalker. Say thank you, have a nice day. Yeah, that happens. Might as well spend our mana to do something. And the fact that that doesn't get used offensively isn't too shabby. Sarkhan's down to two, so that's not really a threat because the game's going to be over in sooner than six turns, I would think. The problem is that this is basically drawing them a card every turn. Even if they have to discard, they're discarding stuff like a land that they don't really need. So we can guess that they have three pretty decent spells in their hand. Here comes Thornhide Wolves. Here comes Declared Dominance. All right, if we draw a land, I'll be I'll be pretty happy. Although they could just have like lightning strike or something in hand. Nope, couldn't do it, could we? Just couldn't do it. All right, uh, if we attack, if we attack, is there really a chance that we win? Because they just remove it. Yeah, we know they have removal. I feel like that's actually. Wait, hold on. I want to move that over. All right. We lost to two pretty subpar, subpar decks. GG's, man. Well, that's our last M19 draft. Uh, I don't really know what else to say besides I appreciate y'all watching. Uh, me and this format just never got along. Maybe this deck wasn't the best white-red deck out there, but it was definitely better than whatever we just saw happen. I mean, that was ugly. To have mana problems four out of six games is pretty ridiculous to that level. Like, that just doesn't seem... It doesn't seem normal, but either way, I actually, I even though with all the mana problems I have had with just my general uneasiness with this format, I think it was more fun than I was expecting it to be, but it wasn't anywhere near as fun as Dominaria. Guilds of Ravnica looks phenomenal, so we're going to wash off all of this crud of just not of not finding the success that I was expecting us to. We're going to wash off this feeling of we're not going to win. We're going to just walk away from this format and maybe return to it on a better day. But right now, today is not that day. So I'm glad we got to try the, the white red deck. It actually felt super powerful when our deck did what it was supposed to, what it was built to do. Right, like if we look at it... I mean, that's a pretty ideal curve for what we're doing. 16 lands should be fine here. A 1 into 2 into 3 should put us in a pretty good spot. We have a couple bombs, you know. But overall, I, uh, I enjoyed the format. I think we were unusually unlucky throughout. And generally speaking, I'm happy to be moving on to the next set. Guilds of Ravnica does look phenomenal. If you are if you are at all interested in more content like limited drafts related to Guilds of Ravnica, pre-release type stuff, set evaluations, definitely hit that subscribe button. It would mean a lot. I will do my best to put out the best limited content on YouTube. And at the end of the day, I just I genuinely appreciate you watching. It means a lot. 
I hope life's treating you well. We will see you in the next video. Peace. <laughs>